but Philly overall has been trending down, not in terms of going toward the Republicans, just people not getting out to vote. And so you got people out there like Pastor Carl Day, who's got a bunch of young men with them knocking on doors, trying to get people to come out. It's a bigger, tougher fight in Philly to get that vote count up than it has been in the past. That has me worried. The other thing that has me worried is that the, the Jewish vote in the suburban areas, uh, uh, Biden won the Jewish vote by 70 percent, 70 to 30 last time. Some polls show Kamala at 50 50. That is 70,000 votes we bled away. That is the margin for victory. Oh, yeah. CNN is feeling the heat and they should. Hey, welcome back to Man Wise. And today, we got to talk about it, man. We have some election day news. Van Jones just admitted on CNN that he's very nervous about Kamala Harris's chances. And for good reason, Democrats have lost support from Jewish voters, from a ton of black men, many whom have shifted over to Trump and some who just decided I'm going to vote the couch this time around. Van Jones, a former Obama advisor, knows this is serious. He's pointed out that Harris's campaign has focused on star studded events with celebrities like Katy Perry and Oprah in swing states like Pennsylvania. But it's reminiscent of Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign, flashy but failing to inspire voters or everyday voters. Meanwhile, Trump's been on the ground in Pennsylvania, focusing on jobs, national security, and the economy, issues that resonate with all voters. With polls showing a dead heat in Pennsylvania, this state could decide the election. And Harris's support among Jewish voters in Philadelphia has dropped from 70% in 2020 to just 50% in 2024. That's a loss of around 70,000 votes, critical in such a tight race. No wonder the panic is setting in. Take a look. The math doesn't work. Uh, the Democrats are down 1.7 million early votes in the battleground states in urban areas. They are down 1.4 million votes in the battleground states among women voters. Rural voters have overperformed early by 300,000. Democrats have to win their races early. Republicans generally win them on Election Day. And the margins don't add up right now for the Democrats in any of these battleground states. The margins just aren't there for the Democrats in these battleground states. This reflects a bigger issue within the party. A candidate who didn't even make it to Iowa in 2020, ex-Democrats like Elon Musk, RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and Joe Rogan rallying around Trump, and the lack of focus on real issues like inflation, crime, and the border. Democrats have drifted toward elite coastal concerns, losing touch with their working class base. Even Van Jones is picking up on this disconnect, admitting that without reaching working class and moderate voters, many may either just stay home or quietly vote Republican. I'm sensing that the enthusiasm and quiet Trump voters are with us this time around. We'll see if I'm right. Most upset about the lack of a border and the lack of our sovereignty and how that's eroded in the last three years. And I feel as an American citizen, I'm underserved, overtaxed. I'm um, kind of diminished. Kristen Kapar, a registered Republican at the age of 18, back in 1988. The Philadelphia suburbs were red then. But Kapara is outnumbered in her Drexel Hill neighborhood now. We vote on different sides of the aisle, but we are proud Americans. The American flag is outside all of our homes, and so I'm, I'm very comfortable there. This is her New Jersey beach cottage, Lola and Taylor, her friendly labs. Push on to your left there. And this is back in Delaware County, where Kapara teaches figure skating. She believes Trump will run stronger this year because of concerns about inflation, the border, and whether Harris is too liberal. Well, I think right now there's a very quiet Trump vote. He, he does have some bizarre behaviors, but at the end of the day, I, I feel he's patriotic and I feel he loves this country and my version of this country a little more dearly, dearly than the other side. The suburbs settle close races here. Hey. It definitely seems like the so-called silent majority could be making some big noise today. We can only hope. But I got to say this. The Republicans this time around, they ran a good ground game, and that's what it's been about. It's been about direct engagement with voters. Trump has spent these last weeks rallying in small towns and connecting with people who feel forgotten. Unlike the Harris campaign's focus on glitzy endorsements, Trump's focus is clear and simple. 
He's talking about jobs, security, and the future of America. And I think that the message, I think that message is resonating. But don't take my word for it. Saying this, whether it was Biden or then became uh, Harris, I said it's going to be very close. And and Trump uh, definitely has a connection with voters here in Pennsylvania. And that's why it's going to be close. You got to love it. You got to love it, man. You love to see this right here, don't you? There's something in the air this time, guys. I'm telling you, I don't know. But there is a sense that the silent majority might be stepping up. Of course, you still got people like this. I voted for Kamala Harris. Why is that? Uh, I have three daughters, uh, four children overall, and uh, women's rights is pretty important to them and my daughters. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional about no. that. I didn't think that I was going to do that. But, um, you know, just their bodies, their choice type of a mentality. Um, you know, I want them to grow up in a world that's welcoming to everybody. Um, so, yeah, that's why I cast my vote today. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave this right here. You know, the saying, weak men create hard times. Yeah, that's about all I'll say about that. But I think you've got much more of this going on. This is my first time voting. Oh, you're a first yeah. time voter. Who would you like to win? Trump. It's bothers me. Me, I am Puerto Rican. So that was like, I was like, wow, like, I don't really like that, you know? Um, it's, I don't know, really. I really don't know, honestly. It's so as, as a Puerto Rican, you're okay with that, though? No, definitely not. I just think... You know, like, people, like, everyone has opinions, like, you know, if they don't like Puerto Ricans, it hurts, of course, but at the end of the day, I'm okay with who I am, and at the end of the day, I want to be able to have a better life in the future. I would assume that she probably did not see the clip. One, President Trump didn't mention or didn't say the bad joke, and he disavowed the joke as well. The other thing is, is that he wasn't speaking about Puerto Ricans. He was talking about the island itself. But kudos to this young lady right here for seeing the bigger picture. The question is, what kind of America do we want for the next four years? This is a movement and Democrats may have underestimated the frustrations building up. Early voting shows Republicans making gains in states like Arizona, North Carolina, Nevada and Pennsylvania. So here we are down to the wire. What kind of future do you want? If you're tired of the same old strategies, now's your chance to make a difference. Let me know in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. What's motivating you? What's motivating your family, your friends in this, in this election right here? Again, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Turn those notifications on so you never miss an upload. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up. And we'll catch up with you all next time. Peace.